Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm excited to be, to be here today to share a little research we've been doing to understand how the nature of uh, personas, the uh, users who use big data, are evolving. Uh, this is something we've been learning as we talk to many of you guys as we study our customers. And uh, we've done some, some work which I think you'll find interesting today that I want to share. Just to kind of set the scene as to kind of who we are, many of you guys know Platform, I'm sure, very well, but for those of you who don't, uh, we build a big data discovery product that's from uh, data preparation, through in-memory acceleration, through the uh, visual analysis. Um, if you haven't seen it, come by the booth. A lot of great customers, and we've used um, experience working with many of the uh, Global 2000 customers like these guys, and the telemetry we gather from the customers that let us do that to start to look at this question in more detail. Now, one of the things we, um, we posed was, you know, this is a, probably a very familiar diagram here of kind of the traditional way you might think about roles. And, it, you know, this is a classic approach where someone is an ETL developer or a BI developer or a database DBA, etc. cetera. Um, and as the platforms change like ours to allow users to potentially operate in a complete end-to-end -end fashion from top to bottom, we wanted to understand, do people do that or do they live narrowly within what they're kind of classically good at doing. So let me show you what we did. We, we took a sampling of customers, uh, of uh, sessions, about 40,000 sessions, and, and looked at the actual clickstream telemetry we gathered from those users. We then actually run clustering to look at those and group them together. And by the way, the details of all of the uh, techniques we used here, we're going to be publishing a paper on shortly if you want to see more detail. But we clustered them. We looked at the main activities per cluster, so we were trying to figure out how do these clusters um, of clickstream, how do you think about what each person was trying to do in each of these sessions, and then map them to users to understand what kind of activities does a, us does a user engage in. And then we clustered the users themselves to look at what we could see in terms of the usage patterns um, across our user base. And we found these five different groups, but what was really interesting about it was four out of five groups of the customers we worked with um, across a pretty relatively large sample, uh, operated full stack in the sense that they were involved going back to raw data. They asked questions that involved iterating, making sense of um, things at a visual level, and operating and sort of modeling in between, and doing that in a way that um, they could comprehend and be very effective at. Um, one out of five were much more just visualization focused in the traditional sort of Tableau-like uh, sense, but the rest were doing something much more interesting, which we thought was very, uh, very interesting. Now, the data science block here is highlighted because that's an area we hadn't done as much work in yet. This isn't kind of a future area of research for us is uh, for these users who are not naturally necessarily statisticians, uh, how, do they, how do they kind of encounter data science and what can they do there? And so we want to understand how we can sort of expand this world to understand that uh, piece of the picture too, which is something we'll be, we'll be, we'll be sharing more on soon. Um, going further though, we looked at the organizations and what we saw was some organizations like the one on the left you see, um, you see a, a very classic delineation. You see, this is the pink is primarily sort of visualization users of the classic sense. The one on the right is um, the, the full stack users, the yellow. And we saw, uh, on average, uh, about 2.4x faster iteration time to get to insight because people weren't waiting for other people; they could go do it themselves. We saw a uh, more them working with more data, and we saw these people empirically being kind of recognized in the organization as being kind of new stars, which we thought was very cool. Um, and so what we're seeing is this is really supporting this idea of the citizen data scientist, this new term that Gartner has been talking about around this line of business user who's passionate about data, not a trained statistician, but is actually thinking about the business and how to do things iteratively right now. We think that's a really important evolution. So I want to leave you with three takeaways as you think about uh, this. One is I encourage you guys to look for the, data, the citizen data scientists, this emerging persona in your own organization. I think they're powerful change agents if you can harness them right. Two is we, we and others, I think we should expand this and really ask the question of how does this broader audience work with machine learning and data science techniques without being statisticians? And can you do that in a good way or do you have to offload that to more trained data scientists? And third, I want to pose a question, which is, this is to take away and think about, we ask the question, as machine learning, as data science, as deep learning techniques emerge, et cetera, are we entering an age where this is all becoming a black box and people are kind of steward, become just stewards for the algorithms? Or is this about collaborative techniques where people and machines are working together and this role of the citizen data scientist is a true career path for the next decade? 
And we think it's the latter, but I think it's a, po it's a point of uh, discussion, and we, uh, we look forward to that conversation as we go forward. So with that, thank you very much, and uh, thanks, for thanks for letting me talk to you guys today.